You for sure used local storage previously to store some user data after page reloading, but it is for sure not comfortable, because the data inside are stringified, and if you need to store lots of data, it is either difficult or not possible. But I have a solution for you. It is called IndexedDB, and by the end of this video, you will for sure learn how to use it correctly on the real example. So first of all, can we use IndexedDB everywhere? Yes, we can. As you can see here in Can I Use, it is supported in all modern browsers. Additionally to that, we can see IndexedDB inside Chrome in the storage section. So here we have IndexedDB, and when we're creating database, we can see it here. And on the right, we have a normal table with values that we can read. This is the same thing like local storage, but it is more comfortable and it will be saved between pages reload. But the API of IndexedDB is not great. This is why a lot of people are scared of trying to use it. This is why we will build a real application to show you how to use it. And what I have here inside my app component is simply two React components, to do form and to do list. It doesn't do anything right now, but we will change it in a second. Here I have dbts where we will write all our logic regarding IndexedDB. And our first step here is to initialize IndexedDB. This is why here let's create a function initDB and it will be an asynchronous function. What it returns for us is a promise of IDB database. And one thing that I want to mention here is that we are not using any additional libraries. As the API of IndexedDB is not that easy to use, we have a lot of different libraries which try to simplify usage. But this is just raw IndexedDB without them. So what we want to return here is a promise. Why that? Because IndexedDB is based on the callbacks and this is not the great user experience. So here we want to return our promise and we are getting our resolve and reject. And inside, first of all, we want to open our database, and the result of the opening of the database will be our request. And here we are using indexdb.open, and we must provide a database name inside. So here on the top I have three variables, database name, store name and db version. So database name is clear, this is our database, store name is kind of a table, and db version is a version, which means we can upgrade versions when we need some changes. So here inside open, we must provide first of all a database name and secondly a database version. And as you can see here, we are getting back a request, which is IDB open DB request. So here we can write request dot on success, and this is the callback function. And what we want to do here is to call our resolve promise with the result request dot result. And we also have request dot on error where we are assigning a function with reject, and here will be request.error then. So this is actually enough for us, but we can do even better. We can handle upgrading of the database. So there is a function request.onUpgrade needed, and we can assign here our own function. So we are getting an event, and we can do something with it. And what I want to do here is to create our table to do's when it is not existing there. So first of all, here we want to get the database. And here we can read event.target, but you can see the type. It is event target and not what we need. This is why we need to cast it. It is event target as idb open request dot result. So this is our database and now we can check that it contains this table. So we can check that db dot object store names and this is an array, contains our store name, so to do's. And if it does not contain, then we want to create this table. And we are doing that with db.createObjectStore, where inside we are passing our store name, and as a second parameter we are passing our ID, so key path will be ID, and auto increment will be true, so we don't even need to provide it. So this is the full initial setup, and now we can use initDB function to initialize our database. The next function that we want to implement here is getting a list of todos from indexdb. This is why here let's create get todos function, and it is an asynchronous function, which must return for us a promise of todo array. 
And the first thing that we are doing here is we are getting a reference for our DB. So we simply call with a wait in it DB. And what it does is all this code. It is on success, it returns for us a result. So as you can see here, our DB is a DB database, just like we need. And after this, we again want to return the promise. So new promise with resolve and reject. And what we want to create here is a transaction. And we're doing that by calling db.transaction. And we want to access here a store name, which is our table. And the second parameter will be read only. As you can see here can be read only, read write and version change. We just want to read our data so it is read only. After this we want to get our store and we're getting it by transaction.objectStore. And here again we're passing store name. And now we can do our request. And we're doing that by store.getAll. And getAll will return for us all records that we have inside this table. Now we can copy paste request on success and on error, just like we did in init, because they are exactly the same. And these three steps that you see here, we will do in every single function. We have our transaction, then store, then we are doing a request. So now our get to do's function is ready. We can jump inside our FTS and import this function get to do's from our DB. And now uncommon this use effect block. So what it does, it calls fetch to do's function and inside we are getting our to do's from index DB. It gives us back an array of to do's which we are setting inside to do's list. As you can see in browser, we didn't really get data, but inside index DB now we have a to do database and inside we have a to do's table. It is completely empty, but it means that we set it everything up correctly. The next function that we need is creating of the to do, and I want to copy paste get to do's completely because it will be 90% same. I want to name it add to do, and inside we want to get the whole to do that we want to create. And back we are getting promise void because it will be simply created. Again, we are using here init db to get a reference to our database and we are returning our promise. Here we are making transaction to store name and it will be read write because we want to make a creation. After this, we have again the same store object store and our request won't be get all, it will be add and inside we are passing our to do. As a result, we are not returning anything because it will be simply created. Let's save this and use add to do inside our app component. So first of all here we are importing add to do from our DB. And secondly here where we are getting a task as a string, we must prepare our new to do. It is of type to do and we can just assign inside a task and complete it false. This is our default object. And now we can call this add to do function that we just created and we are providing new to do inside. But we have a problem now because essentially we need to update our list of to dos. But we can't simply assign it inside because this new to do does not have an ID. This is why what we can do, we can get a list of our updated to dos by calling get to dos function again. And then we simply set them with set to dos function. So set to dos and inside we are passing our updated to dos. Let's look in browser, here we can write task1, I'm hitting enter, and as you can see this task appeared here. And inside our index db we see the message data may be stale, we don't see changes, but when we're hitting reload, here is our to-do. It was created inside to-do table with id1, and here is our value with task completed and id. In exactly the same way we can implement removing of the to-do, and the code is the same. So let's do here delete to do and we're deleting a to do by id because this is our unique identifier. Again it will be read write with store name and the only thing that we're changing we're calling here delete and we're providing an id inside. Now we can use this delete to do function inside our app. So let's import it here on the top and inside our delete to do method we want to just call our delete to do with an id. And after this we can do exactly the same, we can fetch get to do's again and update them. Let's check if it's working, I'm hitting here delete and our list is empty, we're reloading data and our table is also empty. And the last thing that I want to do is implementing toggling of our to do status completed. 
So let's implement here an update to do. And here what we want to get is an updated to do object. So we can update any property inside. And again here we have read write object store and the only thing that is changed is put. And we are passing inside our updated to do. Our method is implemented now inside app we can simply change our handle toggle complete. So first of all we want to find the to do that we want to update in the list of to do's. So to do's find. And here we are checking that the id of to do equals the id that we are passing. Now here if we found the to do we want to make an update. So here is our update to do and we want to spread the whole to do inside and inverse complete it. So it will be not to do completed. And again we can just refetch our list of to do's after it was updated. Let's check in browser. Here let's create last task. I'm hitting enter. Now I can click on it and then it is marked as completed. We can see it in the database completed true. I'm clicking here again and now in the database it is completed false. So IndexedDB is an amazing solution when you need something better than local storage. And if you're trying to prepare for JavaScript interview to get a job, I highly recommend you to check my free PDF in the description where I'm covering most popular questions that you can get on the interview.